Okay, I've had a couple of these calls in the last little while, so i got to stop and address this for a second. Dave, the rents in our area are so high, so much higher, that I can buy a house so much cheaper a month. Not true. You're not comparing apples to apples. At least over a period of time, it cannot be true economically. And let me walk you through why, because it's a basic concept. But, you you know, again, this is a thing where we get scope creep, a thing where we get justifying, rationalizing buying a house when you're not ready to buy a house or buying a house you can't afford or buying a house in a situation where you shouldn't. Okay, I love home ownership. I always believe long-term owning a home is one of the best plans you can have long-term. But you need to do it in a wise way so the home is a blessing and not a curse. And this stupidity that's out there in the culture, including in some of the wonky think tanks, it's like, oh, home ownership is down. Americans are, you know, the, the wealth inequality gap is widening. It's difficult to buy a home. Yeah, that's all true. But broke people, when they buy a home, aren't blessed. It makes them broker. That's why they call them mortgage brokers. And if a whole bunch of broke people buy a house at one time, you could bundle it and sell it on a hedge fund and later on as a regular mortgage block and actually crash the whole economy me back to 2008 does anybody remember so it is not a good policy decision not a good macroeconomic decision to force people into buying homes or to encourage people to buy homes when they are broke now once you're ready to buy a home though and you're looking at rents and you say rents are you know fifteen hundred dollars a month but i can buy this house for eight hundred dollars a month That is just not true long term. And here's why. It could be true for a moment in a boom town where something's going on like they struck oil. Okay, I mean, you get in one of these boom towns, you could have that happen. But eventually a supply demand curve in economics will take effect. And here's why. Landlords want to have renters. And when there is an abundance of renters willing to pay ridiculous prices, what they do is they start building rental property or buying property and turning it into rental property. And so if there's a house on the market on a street and an individual can buy that house and it's $800 a month, or an investor can buy that house and it's $800 a month and he can rent it for fifteen. dollars and there's an abundance of renters out there, is the reason the price has driven up. There's a shortage versus the demand. Anytime demand is higher than supply, prices go up. Okay, when there's a shortage on something, that's when prices go up, in other words. Okay, but what happens is the shortage corrects itself very quickly because those of us that are investors, we want to tap into this hot rental market. And so we go buy a bunch of property and turn it into rental property or build a bunch of property and turn it into rental property, which raises the supply back up. Thus, the shortage goes away. So over time, rents are not going to be double prices of a house price of of a monthly payment on a house because investors that are willing to borrow money or willing to pay cash like I am will buy enough rental property to take advantage of the great rates of return that overpriced rent uh, an overpriced rental market will do and it will cause the rental to come down or the value of the houses to go up and that so rent always approximates slightly above payments it always does over time and so when you call me up and say oh i can buy 50 percent of what i can rent no you can't you're looking you're not comparing apples to apples in the neighborhoods you can if you can buy you know because investors would have already gobbled that house up and doubled their money that's the point and that does away with the shortage which causes the economics to balance out now again there might be a six month period of time where that is not true but long term in missouri long term in boise uh, long term in abilene that's what happens it probably you know if there is a bit of a jump for one reason or another very quickly it will even out and most of the time it's already pretty even 
Rent is going to be slightly more than payments on average because investors require renters to pay enough rent so they can pay their payment or so they can get a rate of return on the cash they have tied up, like in my case. I'm not going to tie up money at 4% return in a piece of rental property. I got to get more rent out of it than that because I can make more than that on my money doing something else. And so that's going to drive rental rates. That's what we're talking about here. And so these are always going to approximate each other. Now, if you find rent that, or if you find a house payment slightly less than rental, that would be normal. And it is not cheaper in that case. So let's say you have a $1,500 rental rate and you have a $1,200 payment. Now, that would probably be fairly accurate. Rent is always going to be a little bit more than payment. But you're not paying when you're renting to put roofs on and fix heating and air and fix broken hot water heaters. Uh, You're not paying the increases in insurance and increases in property taxes that come along until I renew your lease, and then I'm going to bump up enough to cover that. But that's the difference. Home ownership in a given year might be more expensive for you as a consumer than renting depending on the repair bill that you end up having and so there is no economic no mathematical excuse for buying versus renting until you're ready on the short term on the long term owning is always better than renting so you want to get yourself in a position that you own as you build wealth and as you head towards retirement that's going to assist you in it with a paid-for home in, um, in building wealth. But it does not assist you when you buy a home and you rationalize your little butt off just because you got house fever and your little friends are out there buying houses and your little family members are whining at you over Thanksgiving dinner about they bought a house and you hadn't bought a house yet and why hadn't you bought a house because I'm freaking broke and I'm not going to be broke soon because I'm on a budget I'm going to get my debt paid off I'm going to get my emergency fund in place so when I buy a house with a good down payment on no more than a 15 year fixed rate on no more than a fourth of my take home pay as a payment then I'm going to buy a house and the house is going to be a blessing not a curse I want you to own your house I don't want it to own you and too many people rationalize their butts off. They got student loans that burn so long they think they're a pet. They got two car fleeces sitting in the driveway. They got master card. They've discovered bondage and American distress. All the money comes in and all the money comes out. And they've strapped themselves to a house on a 30-year adjustable rate mortgage. And it's some of the lowest interest rates in my lifetime and i'm almost 60 years old if it's the lowest interest rates in 60 years where the flip do you think it's going to adjust up dummy up not down i mean where are you going from 2.9 1.9 I mean, really? Is this your set of assumptions on which you justified buying an adjustable rate mortgage? That's dumber than a grub worm in a box of rocks. That's stupid. You're going to get killed. Don't do that. But we want well, got to have that one with a jacuzzi and a skylight, and I don't feel safe three streets over. And we come up with all this crap that we use to justify and all this peer pressure the most expensive purchase you're ever going to make for most people which is their house don't do that do it right so that your home becomes a safe haven and not a point of stress on your finances on your marriage and in your belly 